Sunday school talking about the Spirit of the Lord and what He needs to do in us. And talking about the caged man, chained by demons. Amen. The Lord went all the way, Brother Mike, all the way across the water to find a man that was naked with chains on his body that nobody wanted nothing to do. Amen. He wasn't worthy, but God came unto him. Amen. You think about that. It's not only worth and self worth today. Amen. All you got to do is be willing, amen. Have an encounter with the Lord. Amen. He is worthy to be praised today. Amen. I love that story. Amen. An awesome story. We'd like to welcome our guests with us this morning. Wanda Mullins and Clarence Hill. Amen. We thank you for coming our way today. As, as well as all of our visitors. Now it's time for me to give you our prayer list today. A reminder that we are having a baptism after church today. So if you could stay for that, that would be great. Prayer list. Uh, remember, uh, Adam Bradford, I uh, need to remember him as we pray this morning uh, for job prospects and for my marriage, it says. Uh, for Belay back, I can't read that first one, but we'll go with somebody has got back trouble. Uh, Lynn Pulley says fighting cancer. Kenton says got an unspoken request. Dally and Kay Lambert needs their prayers. Mike Williams got an unspoken request. Linda Counts. 
Cody Counts, Rhonda Perry Maynard needs their prayers, Donna Mauger with her kidney level is really high, she needs their prayers, Cassie and Cody Thompson and girls needs their prayers, CJ Osborne, Destiny and Austin Cole and Harley Treadway needs their prayers today, and Belinda and Maxine Bishop needs their prayers this morning. So if you would, try to put a smile on your face. Come before the King of Kings this morning. Let's go before Him in prayer today. you again this morning for your love and your mercy today. I want to thank you again this day for this day of life. I want to thank you again this morning for the blessed hope that we have today. And that is Christ in us, the hope of glory. And we're just so thankful and grateful for that today. We're thankful that we can gather today in this house and we can have the awesome privilege to worship the living God here today. What a privilege it is. What an honor it is here to gather here today. Under this roof with people like Precious Faith that we can come together and exalt the living God here today. We can come together here today as a body of believers and begin to edify the name that is above every name. And we're just so thankful and grateful today that, that we can come. And we can come this day not only in this house but we can come before the throne of God this morning. And we can come, the Bible says, with boldness and we can find grace to help in time of need. And we're just so thankful and grateful that we can come before God that I know that has made a way that we can come before your presence today. And we can come in the name of the Lord Jesus and know that, that we come on His merits, knowing that He's in the presence of God for each one of us today, knowing that He is there this morning as our advocate. He's there as our mediator, ever living to intercede for us. There this morning as our high priest, there is one that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And we're just so thankful and grateful today that we serve a God that I know that has allowed us to be able to come into your presence today. And we give you praise for that. So thankful that we serve a God that is able, able to do the exceeding, the abundant, the above all that we can ask or think here today. A God that I know that his ear is not too dull that he cannot hear. His arm is not too short that he cannot save. And I'm thankful that we serve a God that is able to meet every need in this building today. There's not a need in this room today that you cannot meet. There's not a need here today that you haven't already met. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that we serve a God that knows us so good that the Bible says that the very hairs of our head are numbered today. You know us that well. And you know us better than we know ourselves. And so today, we're looking and believing you to come and to breathe upon your people today. We're asking you to come today into this house, in this meeting, and turn this gathering here into a place where we can meet with the eternal. I'm praying and believing that Jesus Christ will be glorified in this room here today. For Jesus, you said that if you would be uplifted, you would draw all men unto you. And our prayer today is that you will be uplifted in this building today. My prayer today is that every born-again believer in this room will choose the avenue of worship to demonstrate their love to a God that I know that's been good to them. Nobody has done us like you've done us. You've given us a good salvation because you're a good God. And today we come, and we come here today on purpose. We come here today declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord. We come here today to declare that every good and every perfect gift that, that's in our life has come from the Father of lights. It's come from above. And we're so thankful and grateful today. And we come today, we come here today to magnify your name and to give you praise here today. Now let us enter your course with praise. And let us enter into this place here with thanksgiving today. That the, the gates, God, we pray, will be open today. And I'm just believing your people to create the atmosphere today in this building that you can have liberty in here today. Meet the need of your people here today. Every need on that prayer list we bring before the throne of God. Every need there, Lord, we know you can meet. Father, we pray for our community. Every church this morning that has the doors open. Every man and woman of God that will stand before their people today. My prayer is that there will be men caught out of darkness in the marvelous light. And to each church daily in this community. Save the unsaved today. Reach down into the gutter and get that one that may be down and out. 
and give them some hope today. Speak to that soul that may be lost today. We're believing you to do that. Believe in our community to be turned around and for God Almighty to be glorified and for you to send us a mighty awakening this hour. Our nation we pray for. Our president, the leaders of our country we pray for. Our military today. Wherever our men and women are at across this world of unrest, we bring before the throne of God, believing for the divine protection to be upon our men and women in our armed forces today. Believing you to give our military the intelligence they need to locate their enemy. That God arise and his enemies be scattered in this hour. Help us, I pray, this day, in this house, in this hour, that we can accomplish the will of God in this building here today. I pray that everything that is done, every song that is sang, every word that is given today and it'll be sang and it'll be spoken for the glory of the living God. Come Holy Ghost and meet our need here today. We welcome you in this building today. We need you in this place. We need you to come and help us here today that we can create the atmosphere that you can have liberty in and we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory for everything that's accomplished in this room today. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now, yes, I'm found. That taught my heart to fear and grace my fears to believe. How fresh just did.
is all like snow. The sun pulled back to shine. But God, who bought me in the world, he'll be forever mine. He'll be forever mine. in the jail, hallelujah, at midnight, how they had physical chains and yet their spirits were free, amen, and this morning if you're going through circumstances that make you feel like you're in prison, hallelujah, if you have Jesus living in you, you are free, and we need to just raise our hands this morning and rejoice before him this morning, no matter what's going on, let us just rejoice as Paul and Silas did at the midnight hour, hallelujah, and bless his holy name.
Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Glory. Praise
morning to comfort and to restore, saith God. Hallelujah. And to put back the pieces, hallelujah, that you cannot put back together. Hallelujah. For God says, I am he who's come this morning. Oh, to bring peace to the troubled mind. Hallelujah. To bring health to the sick body. He's done come to love Isaiah. I'm here, saith the Lord. Reach out. Reach out unto me and receive that which you have need of this day. Hallelujah. For God says, I'm walking. I'm walking right now in the midst of this people say the Lord I'm walking up and down the aisles and, and in between and, and the people said God and if you would reach out say the Lord you would touch me he done all y'all should I don't know just begin to reach out and touch me say the Lord Lord I come and I confess that
There should be God. There should be God. There should be God. There should be God. Anybody love me like he's loved me. Amen. Never found anybody to take care of me like he's took care of me. Now I've had a lot of people walk away down through the years. But Henry's never left me. When I felt like I didn't have a friend left, boy, I found to be one that stick closer to me than the brother. Gave me the promise he'd never leave you. Mike, he's held true to that promise. He's held true to that promise. I believe the psalmist realized how great he was when he recorded the words that everything that hath bread. Praise you the Lord. You have breath in your body this morning. You ought to be praising him. Breathe, you breathe, because you're breathing his air. He's loved you when nobody else would love you. If nobody else ought to praise him, you ought to be praising him. Because of where he brought you from. Everybody else gave up on you, but he did. He did. One more time, one more time, and we're gonna play, we're gonna change over the circle. One more time. Come on, church, I need you to worship me. Come on. Come on, young. I don't get to see it. You gotta raise your hand right where you are. You don't need to worship me. Nobody else needs to pray. Y'all have your hands up and worship. Son of us were worthy. 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 Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. He is worthy today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. When you see yourself unworthy, you can see His love. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. He's touching hearts today. Amen. He's touching hearts today. Amen. He's moving in the hearts and minds of men today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Ushers, if you would go ahead and get ready to see the Lord's ties that are offering. Amen. Just let the Spirit do its work in that young lady. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that's moving in the hearts and minds of us today. We thank you, God, that none of us was worthy, God, but you still loved us anyway, God, and that you showed us that you've seen some goodness in us, Father, that you would put your Son's Spirit in us that we can live according to your will today. We thank you, God, for that today. We thank you for each and every one that's gathered here today. I pray, God, that you speak to the hearts and minds of me and Father, that they would just open himself up to you, God. It's not about them being worthy. But it's about seeing your worth in them, Lord. And I just believe you to bless this offering, God. Use it for the uplift of your kingdom. And guide this service for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Show them the love of Christ. That's what you may now receive the second offer.
we magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. Giving you praise. Giving you glory. Thank you, Lord. Meeting the need. Supplying the need. Opening the windows of heaven up. And pouring out your spirit. Pouring out your blessing. Feel the blessing. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Yes. Yes. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're still our blessing. Our healer. Our deliverer. Our restorer. meeting, Brother Herbie, if you're here this morning and you're an usher or you want to be an usher, Brother Herbie needs to meet with you just as soon as the service is over, right before the baptism. So as soon as the last amen is done here at the end of this service, before we start the baptism, Herbie needs to meet with you downstairs, all right, downstairs in the first Sunday school room on the right. If you can stay just a few minutes, it won't take but a few minutes. So if you're, if you're an usher you want to be an usher, Herbie needs to meet with you downstairs, all right. Uh, I think Michael made the rest of the examples. Uh, one, one more right quick. I need to keep this before you, but we still need children's church workers. So if you're here, you're available to help in children's church on Sunday morning. We need teachers, we need helpers on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. So if you're here, you can help us in children's church. Our children's church is growing, and we need workers. We need people that will step up to the plate, go downstairs, and tell these kids the greatest love story they'll ever hear. And that's the story of how God loved them so much that he refused to live without them and gave his son that they might have life. Amen. It, about anybody can go downstairs and tell about the love story. So you don't have to be saved a great length of time. We just need you to serve. All right. So if that's you, and you can step up and help us in children's church, we certainly Amen. would appreciate that so much. And I know you'll be blessed for your efforts. Amen. Okay, let's go downstairs to children's church. Let's go. We're going downstairs. Michael, you're in charge. Are you down there? Man? Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord is good. The Lord is good. We'll have a baptism right after service here this morning. It'll be an honor to baptize some people here today. It's so good to have Sister Silver's daughter with us today. Well, it's so good to have you all the way from Kentucky. We We do have your house reserved. It's just a matter of you just picking your clothes up and getting down here. Hey, we're so glad to have you. Glad to have all of, all of our visitors back here. We're so glad to have all of you today. 
In this Lord's name, we appreciate you coming our way today. All right. Have your Bibles go with me to the 23rd Psalm. Amen. 23rd Psalm this morning. All right. Amen. Psalm number 23. One of the greatest psalms you'll read in the Bible. Written by a man after God's own heart. Written by David. <coughs> Amen. Now y'all ain't going to die on me, are you? Now you know that if you get quiet, I have to keep you at 1.32 o'clock. So if you help me preach a little while this morning, well, we'll get through this pretty quick. But now if you drag it, I can drag it. If you don't help me, I ain't going to help you get out of here. So you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Amen. All right. Psalms number 23. Let's read. 23rd Psalm. David recorded. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, re he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Wow, there ought to be some cup on over this building right now. Yeah. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 This morning I want to use verse number 3 this morning as my text. I want to use four little words this morning. David recorded in verse number 3. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. The 23rd Psalm is a psalm that you usually heard read at funerals. But I need to serve notice on the enemy this morning and awaken the church that this is not a psalm for the dead. It's a psalm for the living. It's a psalm for you and I in this hour that we are living in. And this morning, listen, the reason I can say that is this. I believe the key to, to the entire chapter of Psalms 23 are those four little words in verse 3. He restoreth my soul. And I believe I can take that statement just, just to another level and say this. And say that the central truth of the entire Bible is wrapped up in that verse. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. How can you say that, preacher? How can you make a statement like that? Because I'm looking at a lot of folk right now in this house that that verse fits right now. Can I get a witness in this building? Can I get a witness in this building that He is a God that restores the souls of people? How many of you in this building right now can give witness that Jesus has restored some things in your life? Some things that the enemy had taken from you. For some, He restored restored your family. I wish I could get a wave off it right back there. For, oh, there she is. There's Heather is. Where's that? Where's Lexi at? I said, He's a God that restored your family. For some of you, He's a God that's restored your marriage. And for others, He's a God that has restored your joy, your peace, your health, your hope, your purpose for living. Now, he is the God that will restore for He and for some of you right now. Look at me. For some of you right now, He is in the process of, of restoring. Some of you he's already restored and some of you right now he's in the process of, of restoring some things in your life. You just got to make up your mind that this is the word for you today and you need to, allow, you need to serve notice on the end of it. Devil, you're not going to cheat me today. This is my word and God is in the process right now of restoring some things in your life that the enemy has come and taken away. How many of this building can give a witness to this preacher and say he's a God that restores because he has definitely restored some things in my life. The entire Bible, I believe, is wrapped up in those four words. He restoreth 
my soul. Good God Almighty. There is no other words in that Bible, I believe, would sum up, oh God, the character and the love of God other than those four words, He restoreth my soul. Now here's the great news about the restorer. But listen to the preacher now. Here's the great news about the restorer. You have never gone so far, sank so low, gotten so lost that he cannot find you and bring you back. You have never messed up so bad that he cannot restore you. Regardless of, of your offense, he forgives. No matter how much you've ruined, no matter how much you have wasted, he will give back exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. When we give him our brokenness and our strife, he turns it around and makes our life something of value and purpose. We came to him, we came with nothing, and we returned with everything. Hallelujah. Look on the screen because we all, every one of us in this building, we have something in common. We were all sinners full of shame and guilt. But after the restoration process, after the restoration process, after the restoration process, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. I said after the restoration process. I said after the restoration process. There is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt, no shame to them that are in Christ Jesus. Yes, I had shame. Yes, I had guilt before the restoration, but after the restoration, I found myself with no shame and no guilt and no condemnation because I found myself in Christ. Amen. The restore of my path. I'm going to preach a while today. Amen. Come on. I'm talking about the restore. That came where you were. Amen. When you couldn't reach him. He reached down and got hold of you. Yeah. Oh God Almighty. I wish I had somebody help me preach. I said when you, when you could not get to him. He got to you. Amen. Because where he was you couldn't get. Because of your lifestyle, because of my lifestyle, but I'm telling you, you didn't get so low, he couldn't reach down and get you. You what oh God, you wasn't so lost that he couldn't find you. He found you, glory to God, and now he puts something in you because he restoreth your soul. Amen. Think about David for just a few moments. Think about this. The writing of the 23rd Psalm. God said, This man, David, has my heart. He hasn't always done things right. <laughs> he sometimes messes up. And messes up pretty bad. But he has my heart. Yep. Yep. David, the warrior. David, the musician. David, the songwriter. David, the prophet. Was used to, to proclaiming God's message to his people of his day. David, the shepherd boy. David the fighter who killed a lion and bear, who went up against a 13 foot giant by the name of Goliath with a slingshot and a few rocks. David the king. David the anointed one. David the man who loved God with all of his heart. But if I read the entire biblical record, I also see David as a sinner. I also see David as a lousy husband. I also see David as a failure, somewhat of a failure as a father. I also see David the schemer, David the liar, David the adulterer, David the murderer. Listen to me. Look on the screen. God did not hide the faults and the failures and the mistakes and the backsliding to David or any other of the great men and women of this Bible. Abraham was a moon worshiper. Abraham was an adulterer. He was an idol worshiper. Abraham lay with Hagar, Sarah's handmaiden, and produced an Ishmael. Abraham lied. Isaac, his son, followed suit with his dad. Isaac lied. Jacob was a schemer and a swindler, cheating his brother Esau out of his birthright. 
Yet God identified Himself. Oh God. God identified Himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Saul of Tarsus, who later became Paul the Apostle, was a murderer, persecuted the church, put Christians in prison, separated husbands from wives and children, stood and watched the man, that watched the deacon by the name of Stephen being stoned to death. God never, 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 never hid the faults and the failures and the mistakes and the backslidings of these men and women in the Bible. And why did he do that, preacher? Here's why he did that. Look on the screen. Because God wants us to know that it doesn't take a perfect person. It doesn't take a superman or a superwoman to follow him and to do his will. He can pick them up off of the street. He can bring them out of a crack house. He can bring them off of a bar stool. He can bring them out of a whorehouse. He can bring them anywhere he wants to bring them out of and put something on the inside of them because he's a restorer of my soul. God can pick them up and bring them out and take them in. Amen. Hallelujah. And He wants us to know it doesn't take anybody perfect. Amen. If it took anybody perfect, we might as well turn the lights out and leave this place because none of us are. Amen. As a matter of fact, the only way you, you can come to this church is not be perfect. Amen. Hey, I'm not going to get down here and get weird with you. To come to this church, you one time had to be a drunk. You know, at one time you had to do drugs. At one time you had to be an adulterer. At one time you had to be a hell raiser. At one time you had to be a whoremonger. Oh, but when Jesus showed up, I said that when Jesus showed up, I said that when Jesus showed up, He restored my soul to God It's not who I was. It's who I am. I may not be everything I want to be, but thank God I'm not who I used to be. I, it's not who I was. It's who I am. And I am what I am by the grace of God. He restoreth my soul. Amen. God Almighty. Hallelujah. The most powerful four words you'll ever read in that Bible when you begin to see yourself in that song. Amen. He will. Some of you are so religious right now, so sanctified and holy, you need to think back. You was a heathen when you were living. Oh, Hallelujah. Anybody glad that he restored? Hallelujah. Can I preach a little while today? Can I preach you I'll get happy? I'm about to get happy. Can I preach you I'll get happy? Yeah. Can I preach you happy? Yeah. <laughs> so God tells us the whole story of these men and these women. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Anybody glad for that? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad he revealed the whole character of every man and woman in that Bible. And when I read how, and I, when I read who they were, it don't make me feel so bad who I was. Oh, I'm God, he really did. But listen, listen, the real good news is this. He doesn't leave them in their collapses and in their failures and in their falls from grace. Why? Because God is a restorer. I said, God is a restorer. Is anybody thankful that he didn't leave you in your failures, even in your fall from grace? I wish I had some folk in this building right now that would help me rejoice about the God of restoration. Even some of you, after you were born again, you missed it. You messed up big time. But God didn't leave you in your failure. He didn't leave you in your fall of grace because God is a restorer. Hallelujah. And I said God is a restorer and did not leave you in your failure of grace. Think about the author of the 23rd Psalm, David, the theologian and a sinner. David, the singer and an adulterer. David, the king and a murderer. David, the musician and a liar. That's who we're talking about this morning. David knew what it was like to have friends betray him. For Samuel chapter 30, his Ziglag experience. Don't go there, you ain't got time. David and his men went out to battle while they were living in Ziglag. While they were gone and coming back from the battle, they saw smoke arising from the city. And the Bible says they got there and found that the enemy had came and had burned the city and taken their wives and all their children hostage and all their, all their, their animals and took them away. 
And the Bible says that the men of David, these mighty warriors, wept till they could weep no more. And they spake of stoning David to death because of what happened. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord and began to find the direction that God wanted him to take. But David knew what it was to see his friends leave him and turn on him. He also knew what it was like to have rebellious children. Absalom tried to overthrow David's kingdom and tried to murder, take his father's life. And just about succeeded in doing that. David knew what it was like to have a dysfunctional family. Amnon raped his sister, David's son. Amnon raped his sister, Tamar. Absalom took Amnon's life because he raped his sister, Tamar. David knew what it was like to be a member and part of a dysfunctional family. Y'all think y'all's family messed up. You ain't got nothing on David. Amen. <laughs> you ain't got nothing on this man. David also knew the sickening, guilty, sinking feeling of being a sinner. He knew what it felt like to break the heart of God. After his adulterous affair with a woman by the name of Sheba, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, the Lord sent a man by the name of Nathan to David. To reveal to David that the all seen eye of God knew everything that was going on. Nathan went to David and told him a little parable about this rich man and poor man. This rich man had many, many lambs and, and this one poor man had one little ewe lamb and he raised it up and bottle fed it and slept with it and even treated it as his daughter. And the rich man came, he had a company, a stranger came and the rich man came and took this one little ewe lamb from this poor man and slay it and fed it to the stranger to come to his home. And David was enraged and he looked at Nathan and said, this man surely must die. He must restore fourfold. Nathan looked at David and said, David, thou art the man. You're guilty, David, before God. And Nathan looked at David and he said, Because of this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. David knew what it was to break the heart of God and allow the enemies, because of what he did, because of how that he turned, and now he allowed the enemies to blaspheme the Lord that he loved. David knew what it was to break the heart of Almighty God. And I believe that when David looked at his mistakes and his failures, I believe he must have thought, I don't want to live anymore. Anybody ever been there because you missed it that bad? Anybody ever been there that you tore life up so bad and tore your life up so bad that you didn't want to live any longer? You didn't want to see another day of light? I believe mean, David looked back over his life and said, I don't want to live anymore. God can't possibly love me. God can't possibly accept me, not after what I've done, not after all I've messed up, not after all my failures, not after all the people I've hurt, not after all the wrongs I've, been, I've committed and the evil deeds that I've done. And no way that God, would, God wants anything to do with me. David knew what it was. Listen to this preacher. He knew what it was to live life at its best. But he also knew what it was to live life at its worst. And so I have to believe that it means something when David writes, he restoreth my soul. If anybody understood what it meant David did when David penned those words, he knew, he knew, he knew what that meant to him. He knew what it meant for God to come and restore his soul. When I look back over David's life, I see all the struggles and all the failures and all the disappointments and all the hurt that he caused. And then I read the 23rd Psalm that we only hear many times at funerals and I come across those four little words in verse 3. He restored my soul. Oh, I can rise up with a shout in my soul. I can raise up with a love to my God because I find myself where David is. Because in my life, I've seen, I know what it is to live life at its best, but I also know what it's like to live life at its worst. Amen. David found himself in life to where he didn't want to go on. I don't know whether you've been there or not, but some of you in this room, you've been there. And right now, you're only here because He restoreth 
your soul. Oh God. Because if the enemy had his way, and if you were to continue to listen to the enemy, you was bent on destroying yourself. You would look back and there's no way. No way God wants anything to do with me. Not after my best self, not whatever I've done. The people I've hurt, the damage I've done. Ain't no way God wants anything to do with me. Oh, but David cries out in the 23rd Psalm. He said, the Lord is your hope. The Lord will restore. You've never gone so far and he can't reach back and grab you and pull you to where he is. He restoreth my soul. Amen. God, I don't care what you've done. I don't care what side of the track you're on, you on. I don't care how many drugs you've done. I don't care how many people you've laid with. I don't care how many beer jokes you've been in. I don't care how much dope you smoke. I don't care how many people you've cheated out of and lied to. Honey, you have not out sinned the grace of God. Where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He will score us. You say Hallelujah. Glory to God. The reason some of y'all can't get excited about this because some of y'all wasn't as lost as some of us was. Some of us were a mess. Some of us didn't deserve him to come and get us after what we've done. I wish I had somebody help me because I know who you and I've been there with you, honey. Might not have been just like yours, but I was on my way to hell. I didn't deserve the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. I did not deserve him to restore my soul, but I thank God I'm a recipient of him restoring my soul. I thank God I've been restored. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. David knew what it was like to live life at its best, but David also knew what it was like to live life at its worst. Anybody can anybody relate to David? I thought about some of you this morning in this building. Some of you in this room right now, you know what it's like. You know what it's like to have life to live at its best. And yet some of you know what it's like to live life at its worst. Some of you like Naomi in the book of Ruth when she said, I went out full and came back empty. Some of you have made your trip to the cemetery and had to bury part of you. You know what it is to live life at its worst. Some of you have been in the divorce court. You know what it's like to be rejected and, and, and to be left with nothing but a broken heart. Some of you know what it's like to have a financial collapse where you lose it all. Some of you know what it's like to be abused sexually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Some of you know what it's like to be rejected and left alone. Some of you know what it's like to live life at its best. And yet some of you know what it's like to live life at its worst. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and wore the hat, preacher. Hallelujah. And I can look at some of you and you, and you just like David. You just like David know that it means something to you personally. When you come across those four little words, He restores my soul. Can anybody relate to what David written in the 23rd Psalm? Can anybody personalize that in your own life here this morning? Can anybody raise their hand and say, Preacher, I know what David wrote about. I've experienced what David wrote about. And when I went across those four little words, I never paid much attention to it until this morning. I never paid much attention to it about 15, 20 minutes ago when you read them four little words. But you just like David, you know what it means personally. When you hear those four little words, He restoreth my soul. Some of y'all ought to be on your feet right now praising God because of where He brought you from and what He's done on the inside of your life and what He's done in your home and what He's done in your children's life and what He's done in you. You ought to be on your feet praising God because of His restoring power, because of His precious blood, because He's able to do exceeding the abundance of the all we can ask, because He's still a way maker. He'll still make the way you know, like a way. Glory to God. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you for those four words. He restores my soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. If there was ever a scripture, a verse of scripture that could speak, this one does. This is a 2015 verse, brother. This is an up-to-date verse right now. This is a rhema word. This is a right now in season 2015 word. I don't want to read that to the dead. I want to read that to the living. 
The dead know nothing. I want to read that to the living. I want to tell the people of God in this house this morning. Honey, there's hope. I said there's hope. I said there's hope. I said there's hope. I said there's hope. He's going to restore my soul. He's going to restore your soul. And the reason that scripture is so, is so up to date and such a rhema word is because we live in a throwaway society. We live in a clean, with a Kleenex mentality. If it's messed up, throw it away. If it's not right, get rid of it. Marriage ain't working, junk it. Pregnancy inconvenient, abort it. Family member causing trouble, throw them away. Friends in trouble, Becoming a burden, find you some new ones. Get rid of them. Hit the road, Jack. Right. You can say it, man, because that's how we're living. Amen. But David says, God. David says, when God sees you, he doesn't throw his hands up and turn his back. David says, if you'll reach out, he'll lift you up and bring you back and restore you. David said, God will never turn his back on you. God will never turn his head on you. And if you'll reach out, he'll lift you up and bring you back and restore you. I love what he said in Psalm 27 and verse number 10. He said, when my father and my mother, oh, forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. The uh, Lord, he said, it doesn't matter who comes, doesn't matter who goes, don't matter who stays, don't matter who leaves. The Lord, he restoreth my soul. Amen. Amen. We hear stuff like that, and we have become so acquainted with God, it just rolls off our back like water on a duck's back. We become so accustomed and so and, 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 and so routinely serving God. This don't even affect us anymore. Let me tell you something. You don't know where you would be right now if it wasn't for His redeeming power. You don't know where you would be right now if it wasn't for His restoring power. He restored my soul. Some of you would be under a bridge right now living without enough mind to even tell your name. Amen. Some of you most likely, some of you men be in a penitentiary right now. Amen. Some of you be in AAA or some or some, some, some psych ward. Or some of you be out here on the street right now trying to buy drugs or sell drugs or trying to get by. Talk to me somebody. Amen. Come on, talk to the hand. Come on, come on, come on. You wasn't always saved. you got a past just like I've got a past. Amen. But we need to remember who brought us out of that past. We got to get back and remember He restored my soul. I can remember what I was. I can remember who I was. I can remember where I come from. Every now and then I got to go back and remember, Mike, where I come from. Every now and then I got to go back and remember where the hand of God had to come and get me. And I stand to say, as David said, He restored my soul. Amen. He did. Wasn't the preacher? It wasn't the church. It wasn't a praise group. It wasn't a choir. Sister Tilly, he, he restored my soul. I didn't deserve it. I deserved death. I deserved punishment. I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve him to restore me. But he did. The Bible doesn't tell me why he loved me. He just tells me he loved me. Oh, I thank you for loving me, Jesus. I thank you for loving me and restoring my soul. Oh, God, I thank you for restoring my soul. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, blessed be God. You'll have to excuse me a little while while I just praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody ever saw an old piece of furniture that looked like junk? I mean, it, it may have had four or five coats of it, an old enamel paint and some kind of that old, that old ugly stain they used to use back years ago. I remember when I bought my house back, moved back up there, my mommy stained that. She put that ugly stain there was all over that stupid house. <laughs> I found it what I couldn't sand off. I finally had to tear it down and throw it away. Ugliest stuff I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but somebody got a hold of that piece of furniture that looked like junk to you. 
They were able to see some beauty in it. Wow. They took that piece of furniture and began to clean it up. Began to strip it down to the bare wood. To, it, to the original design. Once they got it down to the original design, then they put several coats of wood finish to beautify it. And then they may put a coat of two of polyurethane to protect it. Yeah. Jesus. That's what David was saying in the 23rd Psalm, the third verse. He was saying, the God that I serve, look beyond the dinginess and filth of my life. And he saw right through the cover up and recognized the original beauty underneath. He saw through my falseness where I told everybody I was doing fine. When I whistled and sang on the outside, he saw how dead I was on the inside. He saw me hiding in shame and guilt and sorrow. He even heard me crying myself to sleep. He saw how dirty and shameful I was on the inside. Oh, but he took me. I I said, oh, but he took me gently in his hands and stripped away the dirty rags I was wrapped in and washed away the grime and the dirt down to the original design and purpose was revealed and then he anointed my head with oil and dressed me into new clothes and put a robe of righteousness on me and sent me out with a new song of gladness on the inside of my soul. Now that's God. That's God. That's what David was writing about in the 23rd Psalm. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. Amen. None of us was clean. We were all dirty. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad he didn't discard and throw me away. He saw something in me I never saw in myself. He saw something in you he never saw. You never saw in yourself. He saw something nobody else ever saw in you. After what you did, get real with me, Jack. After what you were, get real with me. But he saw some beauty in you. He saw something in you. And you can stand as many others stand in this hour and say as David said, He restoreth my soul. Glory to God. Jesus. Jesus. What, look what David penned in Psalm 40, verse 2 and 3. David said, He brought me up, not down, brought me up, not down, brought me up. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, yeah. out of the miry clay, yeah. <laughs> and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings, yeah. and put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many yeah. shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. You may be in this room today, right now. You may be down. I got some good news for you. He can bring you up. Hallelujah. You may be in a horrible pit, a horrible pit in life, but I know someone who can restore your soul, who can set your feet upon a rock and establish your going and put a new song in your mouth. I know someone who will take you gently in his hands and strip all the dirty rags you're wrapped in and wash all the grime and dirt and get it down to the original design and purpose is revealed. And then he'll anoint your head with oil and then he'll put new clothes on you, a robe of righteousness. And then he'll put a new song of gladness on the inside of your very soul. Because he's a God that restores my soul. I got to remind somebody, look at this preacher. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Yeah. Glory to God. Paul said like this in Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. In other words if you don't give up. Came in and quit. In due season he restoreth my soul. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you right now. right? Some of you right now are in your due season. Some of you right now. You've weeped for the last night. See, this is a rainbow word. You don't want to reach out there and grab it. You know why? Because we have not seen it. We got to see it before we believe it. But that's not how this kingdom works. What's the things you desire? When you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. If you can't believe you receive them before you have it, you'll not get it. Weeping may endure for a night, but joys are coming in the morning. I said, joys are coming in the morning. I somebody needs to say, my joy is coming in the morning. I weep for the last night. My God is a God of restoration and wholeness. And my joy is coming. I've had enough weeping. He restoreth my soul. 
He restoreth my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, oh, my body. He, he restores my, 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 he restores my, You tell me the mess that David was in, the mess that he caused, and he could like he restored my soul, he can't restore your soul, you gotta be kidding me. Right. You got to be kidding me. You that bad? Are you do you really believe you that bad? You ain't. Now you may end up in a bad place if you keep ignoring God, but you ain't now seeing the grace of God. Huh? You ain't that bad. You can't compare David. You can't compare some of these men in the Bible that God picked up and restored them back into fellowship and restored their soul. <clears throat> Put them on the right road. Right. Wow. Man, I don't, Lord, I don't know if I can get to anybody in this room or not. I'm trying. I don't know if I'm helping anybody or not. Lord, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm so glad happy this morning, Lord. Lord, you got, are you still with me? Amen. I need to tell you that God is about a restoration. I need to tell you I'll be done in just a few minutes. That's the second thing I need. First thing I need to tell you, God has got a restoration. Yeah. Right. Why, is he, why is he got a restoration? Because he is immutable. He will not change. Amen. I said he will not change. Amen. What he was to David in the 23rd Psalm, he is to us today in 2015 in Christian Fellowship Worship Center. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not change. His methods may change, but he will not change. He said, I am God that, and I will not change. <laughs> what is restoration? Preacher, I'm glad you asked. I'll give you this and I'll get out of here. Look at it. Restoration is the act of restoring a person or a thing to its original or former place or condition. Good God Almighty. <laughs> See, if some of y'all did too, you'd already been up there, grab you up here to screen, grab that off of her, and just eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Eat it. Because some of y'all sitting right there and you need some things restored back to its former condition. To, uh, to, <laughs> to its original. Uh, y'all don't want to go there with me, but I, 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 I'm going to tell you something. Look at me. I'm not going to tiptoe trying to preach the gospel. You just might as well forget it. Find you another place to go to church. I'm not going to tiptoe for you or nobody else. I'm going to tell you there's people in here with some real hurts that need some, need some things restored back into their life. They need some things to reappear in their life that God Almighty has restored, that the enemy has taken away, or you gave up voluntarily. Are you listening to me this morning? I'm telling you there's a God of restoration that will meet you to a point of need if you'll get up and claim His Word and receive what He has in this hour and in this day, in this moment, in this house right now. Amen. That's what restoration is all about right there. It's about restoring that person or that, or, that, or that thing to its original place or condition. <laughs> you with me? Get quiet as the church house mouth now, boy. Some of y'all find yourself there right now. If you be honest. If you'd be honest. <coughs> Preacher, you mean God can do that? Yeah, God can do that. Yeah. He can do that. I see people all over this state where he's done that for. Yeah. All over the place. Amen. I go down road this other church. Well, they probably ain't there. I probably ain't there either. <laughs> <laughs> and they still yeah. I'm people out of the same boat. And he's done exactly what he said we'd do. He done exactly that right there. The God of restoration. Thank God, preacher. You gonna preach all day? Yeah, I told you if y'all want to go help me, I'm gonna preach all day. Amen. Come on. Huh. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. God is a God of restoration. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear what the Lord wants to do in your life today. He's a God that wants to restore whatever is in your life that needs to return back to its original or former place or condition. And He can do that. He can restore your health. Come on. 
Amen, preacher. He can restore your marriage. I got, I got a little bit of help now. He can restore your hope. He can restore your peace, your joy, your purpose. He can restore you back to life, man. If you let him do it. Because he's the God of restoration. Amen. Even one more scripture, I'll follow. You got you getting your song taken up? I've been done here in just a minute, all right? Keep one more scripture on the screen. Job chapter 2, verse 25. Look at this. One more scripture, I'm closing. I'm almost done, I promise. Prophet Job wrote these words in verse 25 of Job chapter 2. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent to you. Just a little bit of background, and I'm, I'm done. Israel. Is in chapter 2 of Job, is experiencing a national calamity. Mm -hmm. And they're under national judgment yep. for their attitude toward yeah. God. God has released a multitude of locusts and canker worms and caterpillars and palmer worms. They came by the millions and they began to eat up their harvest. These worms eat away at the roots, raping the land and eating away the vegetation, stripping the land of its fruit, of its, of, of its, of its harvest. And the reason this happened is because they become rebellious. They become sinful and forgotten about God. Yeah. Much like this nation, which I will pass on and move on. Now there's a famine. And now there's nothing to eat. And God is saying to Israel at this particular time and saying to this nation right now, you cannot eat my bread and drink my water Enjoy my sunshine, breathe my air, and ignore me. Sooner or later, we will have to reckon with God. You may ignore Him for a while, but there will come a time when He will get your full attention. I promise you. And the way God got their attention was they went through a family. And the Bible says that, that when they called a solemn fast, when they repented, and they prayed and they fasted. The Bible says in Job chapter 2 that God reversed his decision. And God spoke again. And the prophet of God said, Now the word of the Lord is not famine. It's not judgment. Now the word of the Lord is restoration. I will restore to you the years, yeah. saith God. God told the prophet to tell him, I'm going to restore you the years. How is he going to do that? By verse 23, by the former rain and the latter rain together. Let me ask you a question. Question. Are you here this morning? Has the locust eaten up some things in your life? Has your strength been eaten up? Has your joy been eaten up? Has your health been eaten up? Are you weary and the enemy's taking your fire and desire out of your life? But the Holy Ghost is saying right now that the devil is not going to keep you depleted spiritually. God said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to restore. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to restore. Come on, Come on. Think of the greatest day you ever had with the Lord and get ready for the former rain and the latter raining. Yeah. An outpouring of my spirit, say of God, because I'm going to restore the anointing. I'm going to restore my power. I'm going to restore my joy. I'm going to restore my peace. I'm going to restore, restore the desire. I'm going to restore what's been taken from your life and return it its original purpose Amen. and commission. Now that's God. Amen. I got to quit because I could preach to a dog on I could go right on through chapter 2 of John and be there all day. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen, 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 listen. God is the God of restoration. And He in this hour is restoring His church. The former and latter reign of God is coming together. And God said, I am going to restore my power to my church. I'm going to restore my anointing to my church. I'm going to restore the health of my people. I'm going to restore their joy. I'm going to restore their purpose. I'm going to restore their health. I'm going to restore my peace. I'm going to restore my joy. My people are going to come together. I'm going to know what it is to grow in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to know what it is to God says, I'm going to restore. I'm going to God of restoration. I will restore the faith. I'm the God. And there's none other like me. None. 
God all by myself. He will restore. He will restore. Amen. So the question is, oh hallelujah. Question is, what do you need restored in Jesus' name? Oh, hey, oh, my, my, hey, hey, oh, Jesus, oh, 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 the restorer of my soul. Restore, restore. Oh, God, healing in the hell. Oh, God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus. 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 The God of restoration. God of restoration. The God of restoration. Hallelujah. 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 God brought you back last Sunday, son. You hear me? Brought you back. Brought you back. Restored you last Sunday. Restored you for a purpose. He moved all that stuff out of your life. Got you cleaned up. Now brought you down to the original design. And now God's got a purpose in your life. You hear this preacher? I'm prophesying over you, boy. God got a, he has got a purpose over your life. He's got a design for your life. He has something for you in this life. You're not going to be a pew warmer. You're not going to be a church hopper. You're going to be a Holy Ghost young man. You're not going to be ashamed of Jesus. You're not going to be ashamed of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be ashamed of His Word. You're going to stand up. You're going to speak up. deserve the restoration, but restoration's coming to your house. You hear me? You don't deserve it, but this ain't got a thing to do with deserving. This has got to do with the grace of God. None of us deserve the grace of God. It's just a man that not earn that deserve favor upon our lives. You hear this preacher this morning. None of us deserve any of this, but I'll tell you what he, I tell you what he does do. He bestows it upon us freely, brother. The law was given unto Moses, but grace came in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And grace is available. Mercy is available. Love is available. Everything's available in the kingdom of God right now. Because of the grace of God. Because of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's telling, he's telling this church today, I am the God that wants to restore you. Amen. If you'll let me. Amen. But if you have to see it, to believe it, you'll never receive it. Amen. Because you gotta, you got to believe it before you receive it. And act like you already got it, even though you don't even see it. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got to quit. <laughs> we got a baptism in water for being cold by now. Are you still with me? You're in this building right now today, listen to me. And you never experienced the restoration of your soul? Jesus can wash you away. He can wash all your sin away. Wash you in the precious blood and lamb of God. Wash you clean and give you a birth. Give you to me and give you a new genesis in your life. Give you a brand new beginning today. All your past can be removed in the mind of God. Amen. Today, right now, Amen. He restored my soul. Amen. If He restored David, honey, He can restore you. Amen. And some of you here today, listen to me, you need some of your joy restored. Amen. You need some of your purpose restored. Amen. You need some of your desire to be restored. Yeah. Preach on, preach on. Come on. You need your peace restored. Some of you need to get your dance back. Some of you just need to get your hand clapped back. Some of you just need to get your hand raised up back. Some of you just need to get your mouth through your praise out of your mouth back. He restoreth my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. 
One day he's over to do it. Amen. Over to do it. I'm crazy than a bed bug. I am. I, I am. I'm crazy. I, 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 I don't mean to preach like this. I can't help it. Amen. Come on. Especially when I get to thinking about where he brought me from, how he restored my soul. Hallelujah. Nobody knows me like I know me. Nobody knows where I came from. Nobody knew how carnal I was and selfish I was and how ignorant and stupid I was and how I treated my wife. She should have left me. She should have left me years ago. Oh, it got quiet now. <laughs> I ain't going to, I ain't going to, I ain't confessing no more than that right there. I ain't going to be here. <laughs> Y'all heard me. Come on, come on, confess. Come on, tell me. Please. <laughs> they ain't tell you nothing else. That's it. Come on. But he restored us. Hallelujah. Our marriage is stronger right now than it's ever been. Than I'm talking about. I love her more right now than I ever loved her in my life. In my life. And it's because he restored the soul. Yeah. 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 Listen, listen, listen. It's not a one time deal, He restores daily. This is a daily thing, man. This ain't something he does one time. This is a daily thing that I go to him. And I fellowship yeah. with him. And I, and, I, and I commune with him. And I talk to him. And he talks back to me. Yeah. He talks back to me. Yeah. And he restores my soul. Michael, every day he restores my soul. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Man, I tell you something, I've done preached myself out on the whim and I can't get back to the tree and talk. Right now. <laughs> Glory to God. You ready to sing? Can you give me a song? Can you do that? <laughs> We're gonna pray, and then we'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go, we'll go, we'll go to baptism. Can we pray before we before we go to baptism? Can we do that? If you're here today, and you're not saved. You need Jesus. You need your soul restored. I'll tell you something. Else, Jesus is here to do that. If you're here this morning, and the enemy has stolen some things out of your life, and you need some things restored in your life, you know what I ask you to do? I don't care how long you've been saved. I could care less. That ain't got a thing to do with. It. But what I want you, I want to pray with you before you leave this house today. It won't take me but a couple minutes to pray for you. Well, it may take me three. <laughs> but church, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Very simple message the Lord sent here today to us in this house. If you need some things restored, don't sit there like a knot on the log. Respond to the word today. Show your act of faith by responding to the word. Amen. And come and let's pray. And believe the God of restoration to begin a restoration process in your life. Sing. We're coming right now. We're coming. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to pray. Come on. That's you. Come on. I'm not going to try but a minute, but we got to, we got to baptize some people. Come on. If that's you, come on. We're going to pray. Come on. Oh, God, come on. If you're here today not saved, I need you to come on. You need Jesus today. You're the reason I'm here. You're the reason the lights are on here today. You're here today. 